Hello, my name is Louise Herbert and I'm Head of Marketing for Europe and North America for FSX Technologies. And I'm in conversation today with Vamsi Mohan, who heads up the switching services for FSS Technologies. So, uh, right, let's go straight into this. So FSS has been in the switching business for, well, for three decades. So uh, lots of experience. And I was wondering whether Vamsi, just to start the conversation, maybe if you can just talk a little bit about how we started off and, and the history. Yeah, yes. FSS has been uh, completed three decades of switching experience. And if you look at this experience, we can divide this into three different segments, right? The first uh, segment or phase is between 1991, when the company has been originated, till 2001. Uh, we call this as a switch establishment phase. Okay, so uh, this is the time uh, when all the new switches were implemented in the country. And we have the privilege of implementing the first sw uh, ATM switch in, in, in the country. And uh, uh, we have also have the pri privilege to implement the first shared payment network switch in India. Uh, this is called Swadhan. Uh, this is in 1996, it was implemented. And uh, uh, we had some uh, good number of uh, uh, customers uh, to start with at least six to 10 uh, range. And, and, and these, these people were establishing, uh, the concentration was more on the, uh, establishing the ATMs, cards and the interchanges, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a different kind of dimension. Uh, then the sec coming to the second phase, that is between 2001 to 2010, uh, we call this as uh, uh, an area of uh, ancillary products. This is where all the subsidiary systems uh, to the switch were uh, evolved, like card management systems, reconciliation systems, and many other payment systems like uh, uh, electronic bill payment uh, kind of systems which got evolved. And this is the time, interestingly, uh, there is a shared payment network like bilaterals and uh, multilaterals were also involved. There were a lot of multilaterals which were running in the country. And uh, we had uh, the privilege of running the biggest bilateral network in the country. Uh, so th this was pretty successful uh, before uh, the NFS uh, uh, formed by uh, NPCI and RBI. Uh, this was pretty successful till then. And uh, the third phase uh, from 2010 to till date, uh, we, uh, what we have seen is the age of the new uh, delivery channels like mobiles uh, or uh, UPIs, unified payment interfaces and so on and so forth. And this is, interestingly, this is the age where we have seen there is a definite need to look beyond a card for a transactions in payments. Uh, so uh, something like a social security number, we call it as Aadhaar in India. Uh, so uh, that can become a primary key or a mobile number can become a primary key. So there is definite need what has been evolved over a period of time to look at beyond a card or non-card centric switching solution. So that is what has come in this area. So uh, we had tied up with uh, uh, Lucy's payments for a Tango switching solution, which is a next gen switch, which can cater to all these requirements. So that's a brief about the history, Louis. Quite a, quite a, quite a lot of history. <laughs> so uh, um, really a very rich experience as well. So coming from that experience, what would you say are the key, key benefits that FSS is really driving here in the switching yeah. space? When, when you look at uh, FSS, because I've been privileged to work with this organization for 23 years. So what okay. I've seen over a period of time is what is the main difference between uh, the other uh, switching providers and FSS as a switching provider is we give end-to-end -end offer. So we don't just sell, implement, and walk off from the customer side. We do run the switching. Right. right. So under subsidiary uh, concepts like consultation or implementation or migration or whatever, customizations, whatever you call it. So we do all of them. And we plan it and we we do end-to-end -end implementation. So we have, we have been known for doing end-to-end -end implementations. And that is the main reason that the customers for whom we have sold our earlier switching solution, mm -hmm. most of them are still with us. Oh, excellent. I virtue of operations and other things. So we do 
we do cater to though we are not selling those uh, switching solutions now but still they do consult us for any kind of migrations or any kind of uh, uh, services which are required and you mentioned migrations and yeah. obviously going end to end there's an awful lot of challenges can you maybe talk me through a little bit how hfss is helping particularly in that migration process when you look at uh, a switch migration, which is uh, slightly complex when compared with other uh, small systems, because they cater to one particular delivery channel. Uh, a switch, as I said earlier, also it can cater to multiple delivery channels, like it's not just ATMs or point of sale. Nowadays, it, it should take care of other uh, interchange tra transactions and other system interfaces as well. Like for example, uh, the internet banking, uh, can do a transaction routing through a switch because the card and the internet banking user ID linkage can be established and that can be done through a switch. So this, so it, it becomes very complex. So briefly, if you look at any switch migration, there are four major points what we need to take in general. Mm -hmm. One is understanding of the requirement. A thorough understanding, for, uh, understanding of the requirement is very much essential because this will help in the next points that I'm going to uh, refer to. Uh, a good understanding of uh, the existing functionalities and the uh, scale that the system is running or the switch system is running is very essential. Uh, so post that, the second point, the most critical point is the design. So design is something which will cater to the, uh, the next two uh, points, which are planning and execution. For doing a better planning and for, for doing a better execution, definitely a design. This is where we identify uh, uh, tools, uh, the, the migration objectives, et cetera, that we need to consider and we need to design it in such a manner. Uh, this will also uh, give a good uh, uh, a design, will take care of a good migration methodology. Mm -hmm. There are some interesting examples what I can share uh, in the yes. upcoming things, but, uh, yeah. but for example, uh, one of the most largest migrations that we have done, uh, we have not used any migration to, for data migration. Because what we found is migration, uh, migrate, migration using, data migration using the migration tool will take a longer time when compared to do it just a tape backup and send it physically to the other city. Yes. <laughs> so, so what a migration tool would have given a, a two or three months time frame, mm -hmm. right? we could achieve it in 10 days. Oh wow! Um, so these kind of interesting uh, scenarios will emerge when when uh, the experience of working with the same customer for uh, for a uh, for a larger time will bring. Them. So uh, coming back to the uh, point, the third one is definitely the project planning. Uh, project planning need to be done in a proper manner. Uh, the way we do uh, uh, what we have learned over a period of time is not to just plan it for the task, because mm -hmm. any project will be divided into multiple project tasks. So we don't do it only for the task. We also do a backup plan for a task. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's in some projects, I mean, up to the uh, uh, up to a level of uh, the customers and other things, but there are projects where we have even done plan B, what we call, even for the resources. Mm. That, is, that is in the recent past, uh, during the lockdown, uh, nationwide lockdown due to, to COVID-19. We had to plan that way. Yeah. Oh, it's music so, to my ears as a planner. <laughs> and of course, the last one is that the plan. The proper yeah. execution. So we don't execute a plan based on the time. We execute the plan based on the task completion. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever task which has been assigned for a person for a day, that has to be completed no matter whether it is done at 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. So these are the some differentials, differentiators what I can talk about. Uh, uh, what we bring on table. So that is the reason uh, at least 100%, if not 100%, at least 95% of our migration projects are pretty successful and least disruptive to the end customers. Yeah, that's what it's about. So going going to that, so working, and you, you, you mentioned planning, and but you also mentioned partnership, and you mentioned Lucy's payments. So I believe that we've been working now as one of their key partners with Lucy's Tango. Yeah. Could you talk to us a, a little bit about this, this partnership? Yeah, Tang Tango is a switching solution name, and uh, Lucid Payments is the company uh, to whom uh, we have partnered with. Oh, okay. We have done a complete due diligence of mm -hmm. evaluation of 
available switching solutions across globe, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so uh, what we have done is uh, another approach, or another good approach. What according to me is what we have done is we have implemented this in our own hosted arm first, which is oh, FHS okay. again. So because when compared with any customer environment, our FHS net environment is pretty complex because there are multiple banks involved in this, multiple functionalities. And 90 to 95% of the functionalities which are available with the market or customer, any customer, is already there in FHS net. So we have evaluated uh, uh, all the uh, global, uh, globally available uh, switching solutions. And finally, we have zeroed in on Lucy's Tango. Because for this uh, evaluation, there were three main key parameters what we have thought about. One is uh, uh, the switching solution, what we are going to uh, partner with. Uh, or what we are going to redistribute and implement and sell uh, should be a true platform, operating system, and database independent. Oh, okay. Right. So uh, that is one of the key uh, parameters. And second one, what we had also thought, coming back to the uh, last point, what I mentioned in the first question, uh, that is about a non-card centric uh, uh, switching solution, what we need to really look at it. because. Uh, what we can see in future is definitely the card based transactions might go less when compared. It should also cater to the other uh, uh, primary keys like mobile number or a social security number or other for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one is uh, the third key factor what we have considered is to look at a proper roadmap which should cater to the upcoming market needs. Right, there should be always a, a flexible kind of roadmap what we were looking mm -hmm. at. So Lucy's payments uh, and Tango were, were fitting in all the three elements. There were other one or two other switching solutions which came closer to this, but Lucy's Tango was already implemented on a, a true platform called HP Nonstop, which was our favorite for, for the previous switching solution. So we had gone with that. Mm, sounds excellent. And and so which which markets are you actually currently serving and or looking towards addressing? Yeah, as far as Lucy's engagement is concerned, we have two separate uh, relationships with them. Mm. One as a customer for our FHS net uh, hosted switch. And uh, second one is a global partner for uh, selling, implementing and running uh, the Tango switching solution at customer environments. And we are aggressively looking at uh, Middle East and Africa. Uh, uh, for these kind of uh, uh, new customer engagement and so on and so forth. And this engagement is uh, uh, exclusive in India and subcontinent. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the other parts of the world, it is 50-50, including Middle East and Asia Pacific. We are looking at very aggressively. Is, is, there a, is there a way you could sum up the key benefits from the partnership? There seems yeah. to be very, sure. very many. <laughs> there, there, there are many. Yeah, that's true. So the one key thing is uh, the combination of uh, Lucy's payments, uh, Tango switch, and FSS personal switching person. So that's the combination which which is uh, which is very exciting for any customer. Mm. What we strongly feel because Lucy, uh, the Tango switching application is a true platform OS and database independent solution. Uh, because the initial migration at FSS Net, what we have done, we have done it for uh, HP Nonstop, which is a proprietary kind of system and which has all proprietary database, proprietary OS, and so on and so forth. Uh, but there was a need to change the uh, platform from HP Nonstop to other platforms because of some cost and other support related issues. So we had recently in 2020. We have migrated all our member banks' environments from HP Nonstop to uh, a Linux and Oracle platform. And believe me, we have not done a single customization in this migration. Whatever my customization that we have done, which is 150 plus, mm -hmm. uh, what we had done in earlier migration, the same customizations have been reused for the Linux. So it's not just about an application, it is also about the customized functionalities. Whatever you develop for one platform can be reused very easily on the other platform. And coming to uh, the FSS experience, 
right? Yeah. As I said, I mean, we have done close to 150 migrations till date, which are very complex and large, large scale migrations. And uh, 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 we have a large uh, pool of switching resources, uh, whom most of them are, we call them as fee professionals. Mm -hmm. They have the breadth as well as the depth of the payments domain knowledge. So it's not just about uh, doing a project and just walking off from the customer yeah. side. It's about, it's about understanding and doing the real good migration. Because as I said earlier, the migration, the main migration objective is least disruption to the end customer. Mm. So our customers are banks. Most of them are banks. And their customers should not get affected. Mm. And, and I can probably say about 70 to 80% of our migrations which are uh, not even known to any of the end customers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And, and in terms of, you talk about markets, but are you also looking beyond banks, non-banks? Yes, yes definitely. definitely. Because yeah, okay. uh, we have a live, live uh, example now. Uh, we recently, we have got an uh, order from one of the top three white label ATM players in India. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we are uh, the... Uh, it's, in, it's under implementation, but sooner we are going to go live with them. And it's not just limited to banks. Uh, banks, because uh, banks cater to uh, both what we call acquiring, that's the terminal ownership, as well as the issuance piece, which is the authorization piece. Whereas we, it can be, uh, it is modular. So we can, we can sell it as an acquiring suite. We can sell it as a issuing switch uh, as per the requirement. Or we can also give it as the interface. That is also possible. So we also have one more live example, like for, we also have a Visa VAP and MasterCard Mint implemented mm -hmm. in our same FSS net. And we have some customers where mm -hmm. for other uh, our other payment applications like uh, uh, payment gateway in point of sale, et cetera. So uh, the switch acts as a interface to them between yeah. Visa VAP and uh, these applications. So it, it can be implemented anywhere. And we are also looking at beyond banks for uh, such an application because it, as I said, again, it is platform, OS, and database, cloud agnostic. Mm -hmm. It is also delivery channel agnostic. So you can run any kind of delivery channel and run it. So we are pretty much excited about uh, the new uh, age uh, customers like the WLA players or uh, a point of sale acquirers and so on and so forth. Excellent. I was going to say, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say it's very future proof. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to end the conversation now with a little bit of, you know, forward vision. Um, well, it's not even forward vision. It's, it's, it's locked into today, which is all about cloud. Everybody's talking about cloud. So where does switching and the cloud, where does that work? And, and is that an area that, uh, that FSS has capabilities in? So, so uh, uh, Tango is completely built on microservices. Uh, even the current application that we run, run on a, a standalone servers, uh, run with uh, uh, different kind of uh, SOA architecture. Like every process, every switch process has multiple services. Mm -hmm. So you can have as many services which are required as per the need. So that architecture is very much available. So it can be done, uh, a lift and shift can be done very easily. And they have also, uh, uh, Lucis has already tested uh, this in some of the clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure whether they have done any implementation, live implementation as of now, but. What I heard was, I mean, they have done close to uh, a 20,000 TPS testing already done for one of the customers. So it is already, it's a cloud ready application. So whenever there is a need, it can be done. However, uh, some of the banks do have reservations to move uh, the switch yeah. kind of platform into the cloud because yeah. of the data privacy and data sensitivity. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so looking at that, I think uh, whenever there is a need, uh, the platform is, uh, the solution is ready, cloud ready. We can yeah. do it whenever it there is a need. Perfect. Sounds like a, another new chapter then <laughs> in what is a really great story for FSS. So thank you so much. It's really been a real pleasure. And uh, pleasure. I'd like to say thank you to everybody for listening in. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you.